Hey everybody, it's been a minute since I have done a vehicle review. Um, I recently picked up this 2004 uh, t limited Toyota Highlander. It's a late model 2004. Brand new wheels and tires. I have the receipt from the last owners, like 1600 bucks uh, six months ago or so. Um, uh, so the tire's in great shape. He had it aligned. A um, lot of very positive things. This spent quite a bit of time in California. And so there's no rust. Um, there's nothing. And the subframe, everything. I mean, uh, this is as clean as a 20-year-old car can be, period. Uh, um, it just is. It's about as immaculate as it can be. Um, the only thing is the tire pressure light. I have a tire pressure gauge. I don't give a shit. Um, but the, uh, the, the valve stems are new along with the new tires. Just no sensors were put in and I don't blame them. I, I just think it's a waste of money. Um, but that's it. Uh, it had a couple quirks when I first got it. I've done a bit of maintenance. Um, if you, if I got on it at all, the check engine light would come on. And that's because when I, upon further looking, the uh, air box wasn't secured. The things that samp it down were missing and it was flopping around. So when you got on it, it was getting too much air to the mass flow airflow sensor. So I secured that down, put a new air filter in it. And then the other thing is at an idle, if it ran for like 10, 15 minutes without moving, there would tire uh, a light would come on, uh, an in check engine light would come on. And um, this is my first 3.3 V6. Um, and so I watched a couple videos and there's these little air lines that run to the top of the air box and, um, mine weren't on, they just weren't on. And so at an idle for a period of time, I'd throw the check engine light. Um, and I'm almost certain I fixed it from all I did was grab those air pressure lines and I could show them to you here in a minute, but, and I, uh, I just put them where they go. Um, a couple of them are color coordinated. They're like to a perfect length for them to only be able to reach one part. But I put the, the, the little air lines back on so there wouldn't be any air leaks like that, any minor ones. And I, I've let this thing run idle for like 15, 20 minutes and it won't check engine lights gone. It won't come back again. It was an air thing. So I'm, I've driven this, uh, almost 2000 miles with no check engine light, uh, a couple weeks. I did take it across the state and back and just, you know, it's, it's a very good, um, uh, quality candidate for, for one of these, I think. Um, a couple other things I did. I serviced the rear differential. I serviced the transfer case. Obviously did the oil change right when I got it, but I've also done, um, a transmission pan drop, clean the magnets, replace the internal gasket. And then I did, um, <clears throat> three, excuse me, four additional drain and fills. I wanted that fluid to be as perfect as it can be. And right now it, it pretty much is, um, shifts great, runs great. Um, no issues. Um, there's a little bit when it's really hot, like 80 degrees and I'm only doing city driving. There's a little bit of a, a uh, little bit of a weird shift from two to three, but it's only during those circumstances. It's gotta be 80 or more degrees and I gotta just be going 30 miles an hour and under where the trans cooler that this thing's equipped with isn't you being used and the transmission gets as hot as it can get and it, it still shifts fine but it's just you can feel it and typically with toyota's yeah that's butter everything else is butter any other kind of driving's butter and i've did read on some forums that is pretty common you can flash the ecm for the for the transmission but i mean i can drive this without it ever with it just being perfect so i don't see the need to uh to 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 uh flash and have the trans relearn I, it it shifts so perfect um it's just that situation and that circumstance and what i do when i go pick up the kids from school if i'm gonna be in 80 plus degree heat and i'm not gonna get on the highway at all where that trans heats up is i just put it in the three gear collected sot when i drive and, it, and i found that um it doesn't do it at all the second to third gear shift if it's in three is always just complete butter and so because i can drive it essentially 99.9% .9 of the time for thousands and thousands of miles and have it just be perfect i don't see the need to uh to uh flash the the trans it's shifting so good so that's the teeny little quirk it's got um but i'm being really picky you know if it was a chevy i'd probably chalk it up to being normal <laughs> but with toyota it's just a little bit of a teeny bit of a hiccup i'm super um 
you know, I, I, just, I don't want to see the word anal, but I just am. I'm very anal about my vehicles, my servicings. Um, it's all important to me. You call OCD about my maintenance, but I just got to do it. And so that's that's the only reason why I'm, I'm really saying it. But yeah, without further ado here, let's take a look. You know, it's the limited model, so it's got the fog lights. Um, something really neat about this vehicle is I've gone around it. It's never been an accident. Um, there's a couple little, little uh, body uh, scrapes and stuff but all the fenders are original bumpers are original hood is original glass is original um except that the windshield oh that's one other little thing is there's a rock chip and there's a, a crack but i could do a windshield uh at a later time if i if i really want to but it's just in amazing condition here we'll do we'll walk around so we can see the rear and then we'll look inside it um, I'm not going to do a test drive right now. Maybe I will in a later video just because I have my baby girls inside the house. Um, so another thing here, I'll come over here so you can see this. One thing's of note, I've already been told from someone who knows, this taillight was replaced and it's an 01 to 03 taillight. This is the taillight that came with the car. It's like a, the 04 to 07. Um, it, there, I mean... It's tough. I could I could buy a rear tail light that matches that one like it's supposed to, and I might once I have a little bit of money. The tow hitch I just put on this past weekend. So even though it was equipped with a, um, a trans cooler from the factory and you can have the tow hitch on it, it was never equipped with one. Um, so the good news is, oh, there's 182, almost 183,000 miles on this. And I just put this tow hitch on myself, so she's never towed anything, um, but she will. I have a little boat, a little aluminum fishing boat to go fishing with my boys. Um, and I just put this tow hitch on. I got the little mount uh, for the bumper right there coming. It's coming in the mail. Um, and I also got a Toyota plug for the hitch just so it can look really nice. Um, but I'm really... For the record, I'm not being sponsored by anything but these Kurt tow hitches. I mean, it was plug and play, high, high, high quality. I'm really amazed at the quality of this tow hitch. And as far as anybody looking to put one on their Highlanders, um, if you have the cooler and it's equipped, I mean, it's it's plug and play. There's a couple plastic inserts you take out, but it's three bolts on each side and it bolts right up. Um, I just watched a couple videos on YouTube. Um, and I've never done one before. It took me less than 30 minutes from start to finish. That includes taking the hitch out of the box. Like it, nobody should pay U-Haul. I'm telling you, basic, basic, basic. It's as easy as it gets to put that on. It is plug and play if yours doesn't have one. But I'm excited to pull my little fishing boat. But here's one of the little bugaboos right there. So this just got compressed at some point, bumped. But, uh, you know, it's pretty minor. It's still the original bumper. Um, but overall, she's a little bit dirty from highway driving. But overall, just really in uh, good shape. We'll pop in here. Um, so this is the passenger side. And, yeah, being the limited, it's got the JBL sound system, you know, heated leather seats. I love this little cubby with the port. And really the styling, you know, you push button, get into here, a uh, couple cup holders. I put my phone right there, extra snow mode, and the original navigation, um, it works absolutely perfect. And it's really cool to, I mean, I've never like used it as navigation, but it'll tell you what road you're on, it follows you, the maps does. Um, I'm, I'm blown away, for this being an 04, I'm blown away. Um, <clears throat> it's got a sunroof. Um, and it's got the rear entertainment um, for the kids. This is a late model 04. I have five children. Bam. Third row seats, blankets back here, uh, cup holders for the third row. And right in here is heat, which is amazing. So in winter, come winter, when it gets cold out, there is rear heat. Another cup holder. Um, there's, if we had, don't have all five kids, Nice uh, cup holders right here, leather stitched. I mean, just what a beautiful rig this is. There's a there's an outlet um, to plug in for your phone down there, and there's plug in for the TV up. Like you could hook maybe like an older Nintendo system potentially. I don't know, but or a CD player maybe. I don't know. The black. It's been a while, but the red, white, and um, I think blue color corded ports. You get a little ashtray. 
Uh, again, leather stitch each side. Two cup holders, factory headphones, and there's a f the other ones over there, and the remote for the TV, which is amazing. Um, and you know, just for the kids on a long trip. I mean, that's just going to be what a what a delight that's going to be. Um, and so, uh, just amazing, amazing for uh, for the year in my opinion the condition of this thing and again i i'm not climbing on the ground you'll just have to trust me but there's no rust on this thing um yeah again the third row there's a blanket there but pretty easy to maneuver you can fold it down for massive cargo space pop it back and i mean you still get i we have a we have twins and so we got a big fold down stroller and i can fit it behind the third row and get this hatch shut so like you know there's pretty adequate space um i mean you got to think look at that's still pretty decent leg room for a kid i could probably sit here um and i'm a big big guy um but for kids there's i mean there, there's more than enough space in my opinion um nice little handle right here pull her down um we'll come around to here and again like i am six two three hundred and twenty pounds Okay, and I'll come sit right behind my driver's seat. Boom. So I'll sit back all the way. Look, I'm 6'2, 320 pounds, and my knees don't touch. And my seat's where I want it. I'm sitting in the back, and my knee don't touch. Um, I got big boots on. But again, even the space you forget for for passengers the cup holders like i'm a big guy and i feel like there's plenty of space you can see like this how far back this seat is compared to like that one like you can just tell because i'm a big guy and still my knees don't touch two cup holders i mean just on both sides you know toyota and their cup holders um they got a, quite a few of them uh but um we'll pop out here i just wanted to show like i fit there behind myself and then of course we'll come to the driver's seat um you know a little bit of seat wear here but it's still all holding together super comfortable these seats hug you well because it's a late modeled year uh 2004 um so it does have the steering wheel controls which i love but right here look june of 2004 so uh we have the mirror security system here's the rear heat and there's the the plug um, there's the, the for the plug-in, which is cool that Toyota does that. I use that as kind of my change holder. Um, and again, just we'll sit in here um, for the whole experience. I love the captain's chairs. Like, I love the armrest. It's just perfect. I'm a bigger guy. Um, and so when I reach for the hit, like for the sh shifter, it's right perfect. I think if I was smaller, I might have to reach... But because I'm a, you know, um, a bigger gentleman, this is just perfect. Um, uh, so it's just such a neat car. There's that, you know, crack in the glass. But I mean, who cares? You know, I, I, it's below my eyes view. And um, I'll, uh, I'll consider, um, I'll consider uh, getting that replaced at a later time for sure. But we'll just start it up here. I mean, smooth as silk. This is what I'm talking about, baby. Look at this. I'm. It, it, how amazing is that? It works perfect. It follows you everywhere. And climate, you can get into your air controls, your AC. It all works absolutely perfectly, flawlessly. We'll go back to map. Um, just how incredible is this? And like I said, guys, I've driven it. Um, I, ch I drove it about 300 miles before the oil change. So I've gone 2,000 miles since I've bought it. So I bought it at 180, like nine. Um, so I've gone about 2,000 miles. Um, the tire pressure monitoring system is the only thing. And then that's just for my seat belt. Um, I mean, I don't even know if you can hear it run. It's so like butter, so smooth. I'll zoom this back. I'll just be quiet for a minute, but like, like you can't, I mean, it runs so quiet, so smooth. And, um, the, 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 the comparison that I would have for this car, 
I had a 2004 Toyota 4Runner with the V8, um, and uh, it was a 2004, so it was it was before the 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 power bump in 05. Um, but it was so like torquey; it just was never ever felt underpowered. Um, and so, in terms of a driving experience, this is a, this is an all-wheel drive. You have the extra snow mode, which works. Um, works perfect um and this the driving experience really reminds me of that forerunner um we'll turn her off here and then i'll pop the hood just so we can see um you know in 2004 they went to a, a 3.3 and, and just like that v8 forerunner with the timing belt it has a timing belt but this 3.3 liter uh v6 um pop the hood again just brand new cooper discover tires um, but we'll pop this hood here, take a look under here. Um, bear with me, I'm just putting the stick in so I don't have to hold it. There we go. But bam, so it's got a newer battery. Um, this is the air box that I was telling you about, and I drilled, I just drilled a hole through here because the tab was broken. I zip tied it down, and then on this side, there's um, there's room to just zip tie it. So a couple zip ties, and I, they're so cheap. And, and instead of trying, I could probably go find the snaps and redo it or replace the top of the airbox, but why? That's like 50 cents of zip ties. It's never going nowhere. It's tight, smooth as can be, tight. There's a new air filter in there and it's perfect. These are the little air hoses. They were removed. They were tucked back in this hole and weren't connected. And all I did was connect them and they're color coded white yellow orange i don't know if someone else did it but the hoses are only as long as they can get and so when i, I let it idle before the check engine light would come on for something air related and all i did was put those on and it went away that, like i have had 1500 miles of no check engine light like this thing and smooth as can be shifts absolutely perfect um newer battery november of 2023 and here's that variable valve timing v6 3.3 liter um so there's 183,000 miles on it. The timing belt was done in uh, 2016. So it's coming due with 111 on it. So I just, I rewrote over it. I could see the numbers, but they weren't as, they were, they were getting hard to read. So I just wrote over them, like pr tried to match the numbers that were wrote. So July 18th, 2016. So, I mean, we're coming up on eight years. So I got a year or two um, of not having to do it, but then I will. And I plan on, when I do the time belt water pump, I'm going to do the power steering fluid as well. Um, and obviously, uh, look, Toyota. So I think this is the original radiator. You see the, uh, to uh, the alternator says Toyota. It's original alternator. Um, and just amazing condition. Amazing. Like look, I mean, there's some dirt. That, there's no rust. That's all just surface dirt, maybe from a dirt road. I could certainly clean things up a little bit, but overall, going back to the driving experience, you know, for what this weighs, having the 240 horsepower it does it just reminds me of that V8 um, Forerunner. Like this isn't a super super fast, you know, wrap out, you know, beat people in a race rig, but. God, it's just so smooth, the transition, the power, whether the family in it or not, or from towing one of my little boat. I mean, it just, it just is, it's well equipped with its horsepower and torque. It just, for the driving experience, it's so smooth. But this is the kind of stuff I was talking about. Toyota Stamp. Toyota Stamp on both fenders, on the hood, Toyota Stamp. And so just, you know, um, I'm just, I'm really overall just blown away uh, by this vehicle. Um, and in terms of money, I didn't like get it for free. You know, the, the gentleman who had it knew it was a decent rig. Um, and so I bought it for $5,000. Um, I think for the miles and the condition, um, I feel like I got a pretty good deal, um, with tax and plates, um, transfer and all the maintenance I've done. I'm about $6,000 into it total. And I would drive it, you know, across the United States. It doesn't leak anything uh not a leaker at all um oh and then here's that if anyone ever wonders here's your transmission cooler it's right there i don't know if you, you can see it right in there it's tucked underneath this front fender that's the transmission cooler 
Um, they tucked it in there so it's not in front of the radiator, but uh, just overall, um, what a vehicle, you know, what, what a vehicle to have for my family, for my kids. Um, we live off a highway and it's a single lane highway and, you know, we got about um, uh, over a hundred miles to see family. Um, and before winter came, I wanted something with all four wheels turning. I did have that, that Sienna's for sale. Um, that was my family mover before this one. Um, what an upgrade. I mean, that Sienna is amazing. The one I have, um, for sale, but what an upgrade. I think, you know, this is all wheel drive, um, be really good for winter up here where we're at. Um, and, uh, just overall, what a vehicle. Um, I don't want this video to go too much longer, but I wanted to give you a review. I could do at a later time. I'll do a driving review of this vehicle, um, of this 2004 Toyota Highlander. But for now, I just wanted to kind of go over the basics with you, um, and, and just talk about it. And so far, you know, 2000 miles kind of fixed a couple of the quirks, um, really dialed it in and now I'm just enjoying it folks. And you know, you'd be surprised how many people it drives me nuts. It's like, Oh, I have a Toyota, so I never have to do anything. And those are the dumbest people. I'm telling you these Toyotas, they will go and go and go. But it just beating them up against the woodshed, never maintenancing them, is so dumb. You'll have a car that can go 350, 400,000 miles, maybe 500,000 miles. And lack of maintenance is the number one reason why they fail prematurely. It's like, oh, I have a Toyota, so I never have to do anything. You know, you're stupid. You are a dumb person. That's not how it is. You maintenance your vehicles. Since I was a kid, you take care of something, it'll take care of you. It's what I was raised. And so I get a vehicle um, and, I, and I go through it. That's why I did the rear diff. That's why I did the transfer case. That's why I serviced the transmission repeatedly until I, I really love the way the fluid smells and looks right now. It's practically new fluid, 90% of it's new fluid. A new air filter. I did a new cabin air filter for the, for the, for, for the inside. And, and that was really easy and cheap. But people just never, oh, I have a Toyota, so I never have to do anything. No, I just, you know, I feel bad for the Toyotas that get beat up by people like that. Um, what a car. I would argue that there's, you know, this thing's halfway through its life. I think it's a very valid argument that half its life still in front of itself. I think, you know, 375, 400,000 miles, especially with someone like me to take care of it, to change it's at the maintenance intervals. 400,000 miles is a very achievable number for this first gen Highlander. Um, and so, yeah, overall, super pleased. Um, you know, in terms of maintenance, guys, like, service your vehicles, service your vehicles, change your vehicle's oil. I mean, you know, in 5,000 miles synthetic, just change it. It's so silly to try to push the envelope on maintenance. I, you know, fluids are cheap, but gearboxes aren't. I, I mean, I will preach it and preach it and preach it to anybody and everybody. Um, uh, but uh, anyway, just what a delight. Super pumped to have this thing. I've had it for about a month. Um, it was so comfortable, the driving experience, the that's really a quiet ride. It honestly rides like a car because it kind of is one. It's just an all wheel drive car, um, with the third row, but, uh, very excited, uh, to, to have this, um, feel free to, you know, uh, leave a like comment. Um, I haven't done a vehicle review for a while. Super pumped to do this one. I still want to do one on my truck. You've seen my truck in other videos, but I haven't done a review of it. I've been bringing her back to life again. The person who had it before me just did not take care of it. And the story on my truck, I know I'll tell you on a different video, but it's my first diesel pickup. Sold it to a guy. Then he reached out and sold it back to me. Um, and so I've been bringing it back to life from his neglect. But uh, she's, the truck's doing great. But I take care of my cars, guys. This Toyota, it could go 400,000 miles if I just take care of it. And, um, of course, you know, I've never had a vehicle long enough, but you know, this thing keeps running good. It fits my family. It's comfortable. It's bigger than people think. Like I'm a big guy and I'm comfortable in it. Um, so very overall pleased, uh, this, 
I think for, for just, I've driven, my parents have a newer Highlander, a 2015. It's got the 3.5 timing chain, uh, and six speed automatic. That's probably the nicest era of Highlander. The 15, 16 is probably the best with that six speed in terms of how they drive and how long they can last. If you just change the oil, it's probably the best Highlander ever made. Honestly, I haven't reviewed their car yet, but this first gen Highlander, boy, you can sure see, you know, where the thing started. This, um, for, for being 20 years old, it probably drives about 99% as if it was brand new off the lot for the first time. And I just absolutely love that. Um, Toyota just brings that to the table. And don't get me wrong, I'm a you know, Chevy Duramax guy for sure. But, uh, this, you know, this needs help on the front end and the steering wheel, it's lifted, so it's off. You get into a Toyota like this and they just, they drive like they're brand new. I, I just love it. So, you know, feel free to leave a like and comment. I always comment on everyone's. Um, and, you know, if you have one of these, congratulations, man. Take care of it. I, I love it. Um, uh, you know, it's just been a delightful car to vehicle to have. Um, and again, 3.3 liter first year of it. That van has the 3.0 and the, the 01 to 03s have the 3.0 V6, the 3.0 V6. What I'll tell you real quick before I end the video is, you know, that van, if it's empty, like a quarter tank of gas, no kids. And I get on it, it would beat this in a race. It's more, that 3.0 is more of a wrap engine. This is more smooth and powerful, a little more torque. Um, but I can tell you this, we have the whole family in that van and the whole family in this, this is way better. It would, it would toast the van in a race. That van slows way down with weight. That 3.0 does this, that torque. I mean, this thing just how smooth it can be very very <clears throat> pleased with it oh and i'm averaging i live off a highway but i'm averaging 22.5 guys that's that's doing some 30 mile an hour driving getting the kids from school in the highway i'm averaging 222.5 now new fresh rear diff fresh transfer case fresh transmission oil fresh oil fresh air filter like this thing is pristine and you know for for no check engine lights to hurt your uh, fuel economy so it's probably one of the better examples of that especially with my highway driving but I average 22.5. That's just, I mean, how can you, I mean, for 20 years old, that's unbelievable. Um, anyway, so I hope you all enjoyed this video. You know, I praise the older Toyotas. I think the brand new ones with the twin turbo are crap. It's just, I don't, we'll see. I just disagree with that strongly, but you can get really good Toyotas. And, you know, I would argue that this one has just as much life in front of it as some brand new vehicle. I, you know, so anyway, I hope everyone has a great day. As I always say in my videos, thanks for watching. Um, I appreciate anybody and everybody who watches this. Um, and like I said, I'd, I'll give another review, maybe driving review at a later time. Um, it just, it drives like a brand new car guys. I mean, I just, it, it, it really does. But I'll give any more quirks that come up, any more issues I have with it. Maybe I'll do like a six-month review at a later time. But for now, I love my Toyota Highlander. I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for watching.